Today I'm going to talk to you about two specific camera lenses and why I think that camera lenses are still one of the best ways to get into astrophotography. Hi everybody, how's it going? My name is Nick and welcome back to Astro Exploring. If this is your first time here and you're a beginner in astrophotography or just have a really keen interest in the hobby of astrophotography, then please do remember to click the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you're reminded every time I upload a video. And if you like this video, please do remember to give it a thumbs up because that really helps me out. So I want to talk to you about two specific lenses today and I don't think either of them will need any introduction for any astrophotographer out there or perhaps even any photographer out there. The first one is this. This is the Canon 50mm 1.8, affectionately nicknamed the Nifty 50. And the second one is the Samyang or Rokinon if you're in North America. 135mm f2 lens. Now these two lenses in particular share some of the same qualities which is why even though they're two different beasts they are both perfectly matched for astrophotography. First reason being the really wide aperture. The Canon 50mm is an f1.8 lens. I generally image using f2.8 on that lens and the Samyang 135 is an f2 lens. Again I would imagine you would need to stop that down to f2.8 um, or potentially lower depending on your local light pollution. And a wide aperture is clear Really, really important for astrophotography because the wider the aperture the more light that's going to hit your camera sensor and therefore the better quality image that you're going to get out of it at the end. These lenses don't suffer from chromatic aberration. Now, if you've not heard of it before chromatic aberration is where your lens is unable to focus different wavelengths of light at the same point. That causes dispersion and that dispersion when you get to post-processing will mean that you get green and purple halos around your stars and if you've done any astrophotography before and your images have suffered from that then that is chromatic aberration aberration and these two lenses in particular are fantastic at not having chromatic aberration. And there are other lenses out there as well that don't have chromatic aberration. It's a really important thing to look out for when looking for a new camera lens to buy for astrophotography. The first lens that I'm going to talk to you about is the Canon Nifty 50, the 50mm 1.8. And I have to say that for price, quality, ease of use for beginners and the wide aperture, you're really going to struggle to beat this lens for a beginner's introduction to astrophotography. It's absolutely ideal for star trackers like this one here, the Skywatcher Star Adventurer. If you're familiar with this channel already, you'll know that I absolutely adore this star tracker. Now this is the Mark II version of the lens, uh, but you can pick these up. I got this second hand from London Camera Exchange. Uh, you can go onto their website, it's lcegroup.co.uk if you're in the UK. I'm not affiliated with this website in any way, but I have to say if you're looking for used camera gear, then definitely check them out. I got this lens, which was in excellent condition, for 60 quid. 60 quid for an f1.8 lens. It's just phenomenal. They actually had one at the time for 40 quid, but um, it was only in an average condition, some scuff marks on it. And so I thought for an extra 20 quid, I'll get the better quality one. But you can generally pick these up cheap. Another website to look out for is camerajungle.co.uk. Again, it's another second-hand camera website. And again, I'm not affiliated with that website in any way, but this camera that you're seeing here, um, this is the Canon 650D. I bought from there about two and a half years ago, and it's served me well ever since. So I really recommend this lens just on, on price alone. You'll, you'll struggle to find a lens for say 50 quid um, that will give you the results that this can give you. Just to show you a couple of example images that I've taken with this exact setup here, with the lens attached of course, this is a shot of the Orion constellation. You can see Orion's belt in the center there. You can see the Orion Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, the Flame Nebula. You can see a couple of the brighter stars such as Bellatrix. And a 50 millimeter lens is absolutely brilliant for capturing a really wide field shot of the Orion Nebula. And you can go even wider with the Orion. If you've got a 14 millimeter lens, you can, you can capture even more and you'll be able to get the Rosette Nebula, which is in the neighboring constellation as well. And it's just a really beautiful part of the winter sky here in the Northern Hemisphere. And is really well suited to a wide field camera lens like the Canon Nifty 50. The second shot that I'm gonna share with you is the California Nebula and the Pleiades. And I took this a couple of months back and you'll have to ignore the Pleiades in the bottom right corner that's not got any nebulosity around it and that's because I used the Optolon L Enhance to take this image so that I could pull more data out of the California Nebula and unfortunately by using a narrowband filter like the L Enhance you lose the nebulosity around the Pleiades because you're filtering those wavelengths out. But hopefully those two images will show to you just how good the Nifty 50 can be for deep sky astrophotography. I think there's a misconception that you need a certain focal length to be able to do deep sky astrophotography and hopefully these two images here will show you that that's absolutely not the case especially when you're just getting started and it's really user-friendly it's super lightweight um, if you're trying to polar align on these things for the first time then having a 50 millimeter lens as opposed to a three inch refractor 
then this is going to be a lot more forgiving and your stars will be sharper. You'll be less prone to your egg-shaped stars because of an inaccurate polar alignment, etc, etc. So it's just a really nice introduction to astrophotography. So originally, this video was purely going to be about the Canon 50mm f1.8. However, I couldn't make a video about camera lenses without at least mentioning the Samyang slash Rokinon 135mm f2 because this is such a popular lens amongst astrophotographers. If you go onto the Stargazers Lounge Forum, you'll see that there are just pages upon pages upon pages of incredible deep sky images that people have taken using this lens. And I've got a couple to share with you here. Now, I don't have direct experience with this lens myself, but you can see from these images on Stargazers Lounge and the ones that I'm about to share with you that it is such a capable lens for deep sky astrophotography, perhaps even better than the 50 millimeter f1.8. Great thing about this lens is that it's available for more than just Canon DSLRs and like the Nifty 50. And so it's open to a wider user base. And again, Again, in terms of camera lenses, it's actually really cheap. It's about £450 brand new. Again, you can probably find it secondhand. I was looking on eBay a couple of nights back just to see if there was anything uh, cheaper than a, than a brand new price. I found that you could get one for th between 350 and 400 depending on how much you were willing to compromise in terms of scuffs on the lens itself. So not a huge discount, but potentially up to £100 saving, and that is an absolute bargain for camera lenses, uh, especially when you compare that price to, say, um, a, re a refractor telescope, you're making quite substantial savings there. So two followers to this channel, Dan and Michael, have very kindly offered to share some of their astrophotography images with us so that we can see the quality of this lens, but it would also be worth checking out the forum on stargazerslounge.com and I will put a link to that particular thread in the description down below. The first image was taken by Michael Wilson Astrophotography and is a hydrogen alpha image of the Orion Horsehead and Flame Nebulae. You can see the incredible amount of detail that he's been able to pull out of this image, not just from the nebulae themselves, but from the nebulosity that surrounds the deep sky objects. It's a really great job, Michael, and thanks for sharing this image with us. Next up, we have Dan from Warwickshire Astro. Here we have the East and West Vale Nebula, one of my personal favorite DSOs to image. The great thing about wide field astrophotography is the opportunity to capture two targets in one field of view, and Dan has done an amazing job of pulling out some of the finer detail here. And if you think the Samyang 135 is only good for nebulae and constellations, then check out Dan's image of the Andromeda galaxy here. Another great image. The stars are pinpoint, there's no chromatic aberration, and the core hasn't been blown out in post-processing. So thank you so much to both Dan and Michael for allowing me to share these images with you all. As you can see, if you're a beginner to astrophotography or you're looking to buy a camera lens for your star tracker instead of a telescope, then these two lenses are a really good place to start. And if you want to learn more about how to process your images once you've captured them, then click into this video right here, where I go through a quick introduction to astrophotography processing in Photoshop.